lose yourself in a good book. The Board Gosh Energy Book Club. Now, this month's book club choice is the fictional novel The Herbalist, which focuses on the arrival of an exotic stranger to a small Midlands town in the 1930s. It's a devastating and emotional story of yearning and obsession in 1930s rural Ireland. We are joined this morning by Bob Johnston and Anna Carey as they give us their reviews on this month's book choice. You're welcome one and all. Well, thank, thank you. you. Anna, I'm going to start with you first. For people who maybe haven't opened it yet, aren't familiar with it, set up the story. Well, it's set in this unnamed small Irish town in the 30s and uh, in the market square this mysterious dark stranger uh, arrives and sets up a stall selling lotions and potions and a young girl called Emily uh, who has a slightly troubled home life is fascinated by him um, but she's not the only one because gradually all the women in the town are kind of beguiled and bewitched by him for various reasons and uh, the story shows his effect his sort of cumulative effect of his time in the town and how uh, it starts to link together some some very different uh, townswomen. Now there is a twist, uh, which is. is a fairly obvious one, but we don't I, we don't want to spoil no. it for people who haven't picked the book up. Um, Emily, as a as a, is the narrator, although um, there are a lot of uh, there are other characters, and you get to know their stories. Yeah. It does fit back and forth. Well, she's kind of the central character. She, uh, her situation is interesting because she comes from sort of the lower social orders or the lower social echelon. She's not far above it in any case. Well, she's kind of, she's an interesting sort of social standing because her father is clearly, and it's not, you know, hammer tone, but he's clearly a World War I veteran um, who, who's still... Shell shock. Yeah, yeah, suffering from shell shock after effects. And her mother clearly used to be a bit more respectable and sort of middle class than... Uh, than she is now so they're living in this kind of slightly ramshackle house and um, you know nobody's really looking after her you sort of see in another mm -hmm. in a, if, if things got slightly differently for her parents she would be in school or she would be she's you a know. latchkey kid really yeah, yeah she is and she's sort of you know fair game basically for anything that life might throw at her so so she gets a job in a, in a shop um, but uh, she's She's still, you know, slightly preca in a precarious standing, and, and the book is very good at showing how women and girls at the time were, you know, could could go either way into yeah. respectability or the opposite quite easily. There's also a, there's by naivety hides, yeah. about mm. her, hidebound yeah. by by all the social mores, yeah. uh, and effectively trapped in second-class citizenship. Oh, very much so, and also with the threat of being put away somewhere if they step out of line, which we know, you know, it's not exaggeration. I mean, it happens. Yeah. We, we know quite how bad uh, how bad it was, and she's very good at showing that that there's this fear among a lot of the women who have transgressed in some way that if they go a little bit too far, they'll be at best ostracised and at worst locked up somewhere for you know the rest of their lives possibly so uh, it's very good at showing without beating it you know over the reader's head how limiting and how scary it is for and the fact that it wasn't women. that long ago either no not right. at all. now Bob I think your reaction to the book was pretty much the same as mine was when you saw the cover yeah I was saying that it's it's one of those books that seems to have been packaged you know very much for for the ladies for the women's market you and know ostracizing us no it yeah. is and it's nice I mean it is very nice I, but I think that's a step in the right sorry. direction personally <laughs> exactly exactly there's no pink or sparkles pink and sparkles have their place as we know um, but um, it's you know it does actually have a Dermot Bolger quote on the cover it is actually I was saying when when I read it it reminded me of you know a whole whole raft of great Irish writers actually there is a touch of Edna O'Brien about it but there is also this touch of William Trevor maybe John McGahan about the kind of the feeling for small town Irish life yeah, in the country John as well, yeah there is yeah. a touch of John McGahan and we were actually just talking then it actually reminds you slightly of if you remember Curtis Sittenfeld the American wife again mm. yes. which happened to have a girl cycling on the cover but it does, but there is, you know, it's, in a way I felt it was so much more than the way maybe it's just been dressed as, as female fiction. You know, it should appeal to everybody. It's, it's a very assured debut. We were talking about this. It's I mean, a this, debut this, novel. This is her debut but novel, it's, yeah. um, it's beautifully writing, beautifully constructed, very interesting, very interesting in the way it examines, as we said, small town Ireland in 1939, in the late 1930s, the restrictions, the dark undertones, there's a lot going on in this book that is slowly revealed to you. And the writing itself yeah. is a real I was craft. Say that, Bob, two things that you, we, yeah. we, we have to, uh, 
that are given where Emer Boyce is concerned. One, she's a beautiful writer. You, you yeah. don't win a Hennessy unless you are. Yes. And secondly, she's got a very acute observational eye. I mean, yes. this, is, this is actually a serious new literary talent. Yes, it is. As you say, you, you alluded there, she won the Hennessy Prize for short fiction last year. And so this is the first novel to come, actually, a couple of years ago, I think, for the Hennessy Prize, they say. I believe she's in her late 30s. Okay. Um, I know she said she came to writing quite late. Um, she did other things first. Well, I think she brought her family, family and then exactly, went back to, and came, and, to, came to, to journalism. Back. And maybe that's not always such a, a bad an thing, you know, and to yeah. come out with a first novel like this. The writing is beautiful. I must admit, a point. I found it slightly confusing. It switches from different voices. There's a number of different characters, so it is confusing. But the well, writing it itself. A woman, they can yeah. multitask. We can. I know I that's it. They, 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 really. They've got bigger brains, I believe. <laughs> of course. No, I didn't actually. I thought the, the narrative voices were really well distinguished because it's mostly third person, apart from Emily. Um, but we still see the the events from the point of view of several other characters. So it kind of switches, but they're not always, you know, saying. And Emily's voice is, is amazing. It actually, the author reminded me most of was Morva Lafferty, mm. oh, who's sort okay, of known yeah. for you know writing the Weirdons and, uh, or Tolka Row, sorry, uh, back in the sixties, but wrote two amazing novels in the thirties about a young girl growing up in rural Ireland um, just a, shortly before this that are very funny and perceptive and uh, I've, that's what this reminds me the most of which is would very be, highly recommended. Would it be yeah. fair to say that this is an author whose next book you would be both looking forward to? That you yes. would go, yeah, yes. I'd love to see what she does next. Go, next time there's something I'm going to buy that. Yeah, yeah and definitely and the other interesting thing about it is that it's dealing with a lot of current so shall we say you know discussion oh, points yeah. as topical. well. Very topical so although it's said in the 30s there's a lot in it about she things we're going through right now. kind of right landed in the middle of a, of a, of a very uh, controversial topic which is uh, exercising the nation at the moment, but yeah. then yeah. that's what we should be doing. Is yeah. that's it, you know? exactly. And it shows that these issues are not new, that there's something no. that people have had to yeah. deal with for okay. a long time. We're going to have to leave it there, but I mm. take it that's a collective thumbs up. Yes, yes The Herbalist really. by Neve Boyce, available now in all good bookshops. It Get is reading our, it. Uh, our book club choice uh, for the month of June, and if you'd like to be in with the chance of winning a 16 gig versus tablet and a book club, a goodie bag, then send us your reviews. Uh, it should be no longer than 50 words, should reach us by uh, Friday the 21st of June. And if you can manage that, you've probably got some literary talent of your own. Uh, you should be, uh, em they should email, uh, email, you should email to us, irelandm at tv3.ie or send by post to Board Gods Energy Book Club, TV3, Westgate Business Park, Ballymount, Dublin 24. Lose yourself in a good book. The Board Gosh Energy Book Club.